Are you an investigative professional? Did you know? Psst, psst. Hey, did you hear? Investigators Toolbox 2.0 is launching. You won't believe the upgrades that have been uploaded. There's a new user interface and the new PI advisory board is launching soon. Today is the day to join investigators-toolbox.com. That's investigators-toolbox.com. Get yourself set up for the new year right. This is the premier online resource community for investigative professionals. Use code GOODBYE22 and receive 50 bucks off the membership fee. That's a savings of 25%. Do not delay in checking out this site. Just Google Investigators Toolbox or look for a link in the description of this episode. Hey, welcome to this week's episode of PI Perspectives. We're back to a regular show format this week, and today we welcome ID Reveals Michael Morelli. Michael specializes in juror research. This is cutting edge research, and it's quickly becoming a go-to for the research community. Michael talks about how an investigator can gain an edge using his platform, ID Reveal. Please welcome Michael Morelli and your host, private investigator Matt Spare. And welcome everyone to this week's edition of PI Perspectives. This is Matt Sperry, your host. We are winding down for the year. We got a couple episodes left, and uh, we're welcoming back a, a guest that hasn't been on in in quite some time. But uh, we got a really cool concept. It was something that was taken off before COVID and uh, had to hit the sidelines for a little bit. So I want to welcome Mike Morelli back to the program. Michael, how are you? I'm well, Matthew. Good to see you. Thank you, my friend. It's yeah, thanks. Back. Thanks for uh, for jumping back on. Uh, for those who do not know Michael, uh, Michael works with ID Reveal. It's his company, uh, and he does extensive research. Um, and he's come up with a really cool concept on doing uh, juror research. And uh, we wanted to talk about that today and what that looks like, and just like educating folks as to. Um, the things that are out there that are available and uh, things you should be marketing and selling to your clients potentially. But before we jump into all that, uh, Michael, why don't you tell me a little bit about your background for those who don't know you and how you got into the business and all that good stuff. Sure. So uh, I started about, I think, nine years ago now. And uh, I unfortunately went through a divorce and kind of figured out something was going on with the cell phone. <laughs> right. <laughs> started sleuthing yeah. and uh, realized, hey, you know, I've got, a, I've got an ability here. This is pretty amazing. And uh, so I contacted a lawyer friend of mine, my best friend, Chris, in Tulsa here. And uh, anyway, he connected me with a PI and he interviewed me, hired me on the spot. I went to school. He trained me. I worked with him for about a year and helped him grow his business. And then I decided at that point, you know, I, I had a decent understanding of the business, the databases, mm -hmm. and then got started uh, on my own. And of course, my friend Chris helped me with a lot of business and still does to this day. Right. So, but that's how I got involved in it. I, I, I really enjoy it. I know as you do, you know, finding, finding that golden key, man, it's, it's just great. I love it. Yeah, and you, you come from the uh, Michael uh, Bazell uh, School of Wizardry. <laughs> right, right. I took all the Intellitechniques uh, <laughs> classes and uh, uh, study. In fact, I have his book right here, his newest one, Open Source Intelligence. And yeah. I love all that stuff. And so, and then also I did the McAfee classes, the uh, got a board certification uh, as an expert in cyber investigations and, and always continue to study OSINT because there's always something new to learn. And tools change all the time, too, as you know, Matthew. One day this tool works, next day it doesn't. And so there's a lot of ongoing education uh, that, that that's important for all of us. That's part of why we're doing this. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually, um, I'm going to start advertising with Michael's uh, magazine, that, that Unredacted uh, quarterly magazine he's putting out. I've been chatting with his people. I, I love his podcast. I love yeah. what he does. He's just such an interesting fellow. I think if there was somebody that I could get <laughs> on my list to, to interview, it would probably be him, although he would never do video. He's anonymous as they come, brother. No. Nobody knows what he looks like. <laughs> have a picture of something, right? <laughs> <laughs> something. That would be an audio only oh, yeah. show, but it, it, it's all good. Um, yeah, and and you've worked on some big cases in uh, Oklahoma as well, right? And remember from back when we spoke last time, there was a there was a big one with a, an officer. I think you were involved with, right? Yeah, we did. There was an officer that was arrested and accused of uh, rape, uh, 
and other crimes. And we did a lot of deep social media on about 11, if I remember, 11 women. And we were able to find all kinds of information about their lifestyle. Mm. and their relationships, which the court or his attorney was able to use to defend him. Mm -hmm. And that's part of our area of expertise, as you know, Matthew, is trying to find those needles in the haystack mm -hmm. uh, is what we're really good at and finding that kind of information. We get really difficult cases like that. Yeah. And uh, we did a case for Sly Fox. I think you referred to us. Yeah, we did a nice case for her. So uh, it, yeah, we and we did a big tort case too. We did. I know we're going to talk a little bit later about this product, this juror report, but just to kind of uh, tease it a little bit, the largest tort case in Oklahoma was a two hundred million dollar lawsuit, wow. uh, and the attorney uh, team that defended it hired us. We did 190 juror profiles wow. for them. And they basically got a team of individuals and attorneys, and they went through all those profiles. And the first thing they decided is, these are the ones we don't want on the jury pool. Right, right. So that was, you know, the kind of a, a exclusion. Who do we want to exclude? Who do we want? And anyway, um, and they've given us a beautiful endorsement. I think they won the, their case because they had the payout was two million dollars, wow. not two hundred million dollars. Right, exactly. <laughs> they won that case. Yeah. So they were thrilled, and they use this often. It's just uh, so it's it's a lot of fun doing that. that as well. That's great. I mean, as investigators, we always you know we we see this as an avenue of, of additional income revenue, right? Um, so I'm pretty good on the computer. I'm pretty good on Facebook. I know how to get around. I have the investigative mind. You know. I'll be able to do this. But when you actually get that job to do the juror research, at least in New York, anyways, the way it was, and I, I did a couple of them before COVID hit. Um, it's hard and fast. You know, you got eight to 15 minutes to make a call on somebody. And oh, by the way, you've got their name in the county they live in and nothing further. So yeah. good luck in identifying, <laughs> you know, the right person. And it's, right. it's such a whirlwind. I remember, yeah. um, there was one that was out of the county, uh, out of the five boroughs that was in upstate, and we had 200 names. So um, the 200 names, though, were given to us like six weeks or, or maybe a month before the case started. Yeah, time. Yeah. So I had a little bit of time to do it, yeah. but it was still a lot of work, a lot of data to cull through. Um, and, um, you know, it, it, do you trust the batch? services to go through and do that and that that was always one of the issues but you've you've solved that problem and you, you've gotten results and we've worked together yeah. on some cases here in in new york where um you know some of my lawyer clients have used this product and you know, again the testimonials that, that are amazing i thought it was worthwhile to come on and, and kind of talk about it and uh and go that route so um, it, it, it's all, it's all good stuff. It's all trial and error. And, yeah. uh, I, I know you've, uh, been working very hard at, uh, you know, refining it. Um, yeah. so what, let's talk a little bit about the overview and the things that, that it does. So tell me a, a, a bit about, um, the search and what it includes. Sure. So just to your point a second ago, just so your, your listeners understand this, we get this report produced in about 10 minutes. So we can get a list of 40 people. Like you mentioned in the trial we did recently, we have a name and the borough they live in. That's it. No address, no email, no phone number, no date of birth, nothing. And we were able to find and create these jury profiles, uh, a list of you know 20 at a time in about 10 minutes. So that's the beauty of the product. It's almost instant. And it provides tremendous insight. So, for example, you were asking, what are some of the, what are, let me highlight the areas that are included yeah. in the profile. Uh, so, for example, we have insights, and I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit more on these, but we have insights that we provide, social media information, which is really important, professional history of the individual, their educational history, their political views, members of the household, the community they live in, and then there's something we call haystack DNA likely views, which I'll get into more detail about that, their address history, and then a background check. Mm -hmm. So it's really robust and very quick. 
to get this information. And attorneys love it because in a few seconds, they can review this and they can understand, I want this guy or I don't want this guy yeah. on this jury. Yeah. And like the model that you and I have worked with is, you know, obviously these are, these are my clients that, that I'm soliciting saying, Hey, you know, like we can do this stuff now, but and then it's, you're handling the work and you're doing it. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't have to worry about missing anything or, or being involved in it uh, mm -hmm. because it's, it's not my specialty, right? right. Sure. Right. I can go online and I can look at stuff and I can spend the time, but I'm also running a business too. Yeah. Uh, that has other needs and that I don't have the full attention. Uh, and yeah. I've always been a big you know, proponent of that, you know, finding somebody who's got a specialized skill that can give the highest level of service mm -hmm. to your client. And I can make some money on it too. And of course this person doing can make some money and yeah, uh, the, the client's happy. Everybody gets what they want. Everybody wins. And, you know, we white, we can white label it as well. So that if they don't want ID reveal on it, we can yeah. put their name on it, their email on it. And, uh, and yeah, I agree with you. I mean, there, there are people who have expertise and they're really good at what they do. Mm -hmm. And those are the people to find. And then basically you become a middleman. You make a few bucks on, on someone else does the work. You make a few bucks on the end and it's a new product that you can offer your clients. And also, as we were talking beforehand, this is great for background investigations. I use this information in my background reports. And my clients absolutely love it because they're getting information that other PIs are not providing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like political views tell you a lot about a person. And this, this hashtag DNA, for example, on this one report I'm looking at in front of me, this person is abortion pro-choice, affordable housing, climate change believer, death penalty opposer. So if you got a death penalty case, you have this insight, you don't want this person on your trial, or you do if you want the death penalty. Yeah. Uh, Green New Deal, they support it. Over Overall ideology, liberal. Uh, it tells you, did they vote? Do they believe in that Trump uh, uh, won the election or lost the election? <laughs> you know, immigration, right. um, Medicare, minimum wage, opioid, pipeline. It gives you tremendous insight into the way a person thinks and this is, I think, something that's really been missing for PIs. Yeah. We can get background information and tell the guy lived in this county, he's got this court problem. But how do people think? To me, I think that's the golden egg that we've been missing. And th yeah. these reports provide that information. And, you know, it, it's that little extra if somebody's doing due diligence for pre employment screening. You know, like, mm -hmm. I don't really do it in New York, but there are folks out there that do it, you know? So if you do that pre-employment screening, this is an amazing tool. And Mike's not, we're not going to talk price here because I, I, I'm not going to lock you into anything, but I'm going to tell you it's affordable. Very <laughs> like it's actually, it's very, uh, very affordable <laughs> for you to, 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 to use it and, and, you know, again, mark it up, you know, everybody gets paid, everybody's happy. Um, you know, and it's, it's very comprehensive and um, something that, that can really add value and set you aside from maybe somebody else who does something similar. You know, uh, we're all investigators. We all know where to look. We all do things, but it's yes. like, what can you do? What can you bring to the table? That's adding value to yeah. add value, you know, and that's, that's really what it comes down to. Um, and, and there, there's so many different ways you, you can do that. Right beginning of a case you take a new case in mm. this is the person you're going to be representing let's get a good um idea of of what their their background is right hey, what could harm us later on during a trial or you know what do we need to know about right mm. another point getting ready for depositions right if you're going to have your client be deposed or you're deposing somebody else you know, getting a good background on them and maybe understanding the pressure points that are, are gonna gonna cause them to say something, you know, that uh, that you want them to say, right? Yeah. Um, knowing someone's background. So yeah. um, tell me a little bit about this uh, Haystack um, stuff. So how did it come about? Um, obviously, I don't, you know, I don't need to know too, too much, but just the, the understanding sure. of, you know, what's the credibility of this data? How, how's it? Sure. Uh, so let me give you kind of an overview of how it works. And this information actually comes with the report so that the attorney can review it and understand how we're deriving this information. So 
the, basically the, the, the juror lifestyle profile gives an overview of public information available on potential jurors. I'm reading this. This data comes from trusted sources in political, not just commercial data, but political data. And the quality is very, very high. So for example, we all have databases that we use, IDI Core, Delft Point. We all use that. We use that. Mm -hmm. But we also have access to political data. So in, two, in 2008, Obama, they did all this surveying of people. And this is where this originally comes from. This whole profile system was developed by Obama's campaign. Now, I'm not making any political statements of who I'm for and against. It has right. nothing to do with it. I want data. <laughs> That's what I'm after. Information, right? So uh, it has nothing to do with anybody's political views. It's just a system that was developed, and we have access to this ongoing research. And, for example, we can get information like insights, a brief summary of uh, what's most important about the juror. And then in this one, uh, this particular report, criminal and traffic records found, analytical skills, the juror social media profile mentions, big data, malware analyst, principal component anal analyst, and Python. Right. Um, the juror appears to be an officer in a business. So those are quick, three quick insights that are on Educated. the report. Yeah, the person right. educated, you, you know, you know, they're probably gonna, you know, they're probably gonna be toward, you know, towards the liberal side. You know, yeah. I, I think folks that that follow that that pathway, yeah, uh, tend to lean that way. You know, right. he probably wasn't marching the on the Capitol on the sixth of January. No, no, no. Know? And and again, what you're saying, Matthew, is this: you, the juror, or the person that you're doing a profile on, a background report, or a juror report on, how are they thinking? Yeah. Are they are they liberal in their thinking? Are they very conservative in their thinking? Are they blue collar? Yeah. Are they educated? That all makes a difference in a jury. Yeah. And for example, in Oklahoma, you know, we have a lot of oil cases and things of that nature, and we have a lot of blue collar people. So a lot of times blue collar people are going to think we're going to award this guy millions of dollars. Yeah. But that's why these insights are important. Of course, we scrape social media. So we find oftentimes find photos of the juror so that they can look at what this person looks like. Um, and then we're going to find their, you know, they have LinkedIn, do they have, uh, so just for that alone, it's worth, uh, it's worth its weight in gold. Yeah. We look at their professional history and all this is the haystack, uh, DNA, IQ, basically information that we're getting. Do they have professional licenses? We look at databases and social media for it. We look at their education. Again, their political views, their wealth and lifestyle. That's kind of modeled data. Yeah. So that's not exact, but we put that in here. It's yeah. modeled. Uh, yeah. Members of households. Sometimes we can find individuals that are living in their home and information about them. Household interests are really important sometimes. Let me see if I have something on on this one. Sometimes it'll have things like, you know, they own computers or they're they're into landscaping or whatever. There could be some insights there. Uh, community demographics, lifestyle, which sometimes is important because it tells you the value of their properties, the kind of neighborhood they live in. Uh, and so there's a lot of uh, really good information yeah. provided in a quick profile. It's all good stuff. So... We're going to jump out and take a, a break real quick, but when we come back, I, I, I want to just keep uh, talking further about this and and the concept, and maybe giving some ideas um, to investigators that that want to sell this or do more with this, like how they can open the doors uh, to their own clients to educate them about uh, sure. this stuff. So, everybody, sit tight, and we will be right back. You guys have been hearing uh, for a long time about how much I love cross tracks, but now you're going to hear from somebody else. So we got George Gerges here. George is a member and a user of cross tracks. George, tell me real quickly what you love about cross tracks. The simplicity of using it and the ability to customize everything that you could do with cross tracks is awesome. It actually allowed me to take the way that I do my business and implement it into their system. And not only am I able to manage 10 or 15 cases, I'm able to manage 50 to 100 cases with the same effort. Fantastic. So Crosstrax, um, the case management system, they are SOC 2 certified. Basically, that's an encryption, really an upgrade. They're the only ones out there that are doing it. So please support this great 
sponsor that supports our show. Uh, check them out. The links are in the show notes. Cross tracks. If you're an investigator, you should be using them today. Check out the PI Institute of Education at piinstitute.com. Since 1989, Kelly Riddle has been teaching on subjects such as surveillance, nursing home investigations, insurance fraud, domestic investigations, hidden assets, and accident scene investigations. The PI Institute of Education is a featured learning partner in the investigatorstoolbox.com. So check out the free content on the site, then visit the Institute for more great savings on additional classes. Looking for an insurance agent that puts you first? Every PI business is different. That's why OREP Insurance can shop multiple markets to ensure you get the best coverage to meet your unique business needs. OREP's model is business by the golden rule, and for over 20 years, they've built their business by putting their clients first. So come enjoy a fast online application and same-day certificates of insurance at OREP.org. OREP has coverage for armed investigators, executive protection, and even has a separate policy for security firms. The application takes less than five minutes, so visit OREP.org today. OREP.org. Are you an investigative professional with an international problem you can't solve? Conflict International has the knowledge and relationships to jump in for you. We compensate investigators for referring cases to our office. Contact us today for details. Conflict International uses insight, intelligence, investigation, risk management, and strategic solutions to solve problems troubling individuals and companies of all kinds anywhere around the world. Whether you're planning to hire a person to a position of trust, carry out due diligence on a company, trace hidden assets, or require skilled boots on the ground, Conflict International investigators can seamlessly pursue a case across borders, offering a truly global solution. Find out about our extensive range of services at ConflictInternational.com. Conflict International. Global reach. International knowledge. Make sure you check out the latest issue of PI Magazine available online or via hard copy. Visit PIMagazine.com to learn more. And welcome back to PI Perspectives. This is Matt Sperry, your host. Today we're joined by Michael Morelli from uh, ID Reveal. Michael, welcome back to the program. Thank you. Yeah, I, I always like Mike. Michael, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like Michael. I never I, know. I know you Michael. like Michael, right? Yeah, yeah. So I like, I first heard you, I think on Francie Kayla's show years yeah. ago. I was like, wow, I got to interview this guy. He's so like really interesting stuff he's talking about. But he always goes by Michael. I'm like, I remember, <laughs> don't call Mike. Don't call Mike. Don't call Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am calling you Mike. So, <laughs> Good, um, so we, we're talking about the concept of, um, uh, you know, juror research and um, how that came about and, and how you've, you've been at it for a while and just kind of gone through some trial and error on things and, and really um, streamlined uh, reports and, and really got to a point where it's something that is actually useful. And uh, um, I know in my experience in dealing with attorneys, uh, you know, when you're trying to put something in front of them, a two or three page report is so much better than a 300 page report, right? Yes, yes. In fact, if I could interject, Matthew, originally it was eight pages. Mm-hmm. And I sat down with attorneys and interviewed different attorneys and they all said the same thing. Give it to me in two, maybe three, yeah. max. Yeah. And we refined it. Because they don't have time. You're in a jury, you got 15 minutes, like you said. So it's compact, it's easy to read, bam. Um, You know, it it occurred to me before we took uh, took a break on on this that, um, you know, one of the things that it does, one of the advantages is it it hedges you against people that may be lying when they're uh, questioned on the stand, Mm -hmm. whether or not they want to be a juror. You know, like a lot of times, and a juror may approach it and say, like, I'm going to say what I think they want me to say, because I really want to serve on this jury. Like, I really, you know, I, it's so exciting to me to, to serve on jury. Or they may say, I'm going to say whatever I kind of get out of this, because I don't want this, right? Think, I don't yeah. want to be here, right? Uh, but by being able to take a look at all those um, indicators that you, you know, we mentioned earlier, 
really gives you the truth of how that person feels, right? They may be telling you something, but they may, their actions uh, may tell you something different, right? Yes, a absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, like you mentioned, it's good to use this um, before a deposition, but also on the, at the day of the, of the uh, voir dire, because, mm -hmm you know, people are that way. They want to get off and they're going to say whatever they can to get out right. or they're going to say whatever they can to be there. But, but back to that idea, when you do a deposition, you have this two page insight, you know, a lot of information. And I'm thinking about my friend, Chris, again, because he gets these all the time. And he has told me stories where he's found, we found information where this girl's license was expired she had no insurance and she drove two hours to the deposition. He said to her, and he knew all this from our reports. And he said to her, Hey, how'd you get here today? Oh, I drove. Oh, did you drive in your own car? Yes. Uh, and then he said, isn't it true? Your license has been revoked and her attorney's mouth and her mouth dropped open. Isn't it true? You don't have insurance. So these insights are important for interviewing for yeah. depositions too, because you're going to know, so much about a person before they walk in and then you put them on edge and they're like, how does this guy know everything about my life? Exactly. Right. So it's a tremendous, it's a tremendous tool in that, for that use as well. They may say Conway, uh, Kanye West for president, right? Just to get out of jury duty. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> everything says, uh, right. says say it, whatever uh, they got to say. Yeah. Right. And it, it, and again, it just hedges you against that. It gives you a little bit of an advantage. Yeah. Um, so, so now like we've talked about the process, we talk about what it does and it's, it's amazing. And I, and I know it's amazing because I've seen it at work and my clients have used it and uh, I'm a big believer in that product. So now let's talk a little bit about how us as investigators, you know, can, can get this in the hands of our clients. Right. So what's in it for me, <laughs> you know, right. right. Deal, right? Um, but during the break, you had mentioned something I thought was really cool. Uh, that you were willing to do. So let's let's jump into that as far as you know, marketing and how to how to get into this. So what, what were your thoughts on that? So what we can do for for PIs is make it as easy as possible. We will write, in fact, I already have something composed, but we'll we'll edit it a bit. We will write an introductory email and we have a brochure. We'll change it a little bit so it's it's white labeled. So there's no ID reveal on it. Mm -hmm. And um, we can send it, anybody that can request it, they can request it, support at idreveal.com, support at idreveal, like identity, idreveal.com. All they have to do is email me, say, I heard was talk, you were talking to Matthew on a show. Can you send me the promotional material? We will email it to them. They can use the brochure and then they just send, it's easy peasy, send it to all your clients. And then we'll put in there, there's three uses. It's used as juror intelligence. It's used as in a background report and it's used for uh, uh, depositions. So to, to gain that little competitive edge right. and we'll make it easy for them, Matthew. And then people can say, hey, send it to your clients and then people who are interested, we provide it for you and we'll white label it. And then they can see a sample of what it looks like because we're talking about something that people can't visualize yet, but once they see it, they're going to love it. And I think their clients are going to love it. Yeah. I mean, it, it I, I've seen it work and I, I know it works and uh, you know, I was, I was very excited, you know, uh, mm -hmm. You and I had this conversation like literally right before COVID hit. Yeah, and then everything like I'm working on this thing, it's great. I'm like, let's do it. And then <laughs> the bottom fell out, right? Yeah. And we're just yeah. like, oh, yeah. You know, when are they getting back into the courtrooms? And it it's literally like just now it's really starting to pick up. Like I would say the yes. fourth quarter yes. of 2022 um is when I'm seeing it in New York, anyways, where the real trials going on, like turners are super busy, they're mm -hmm. trying cases and, and it's real. And I, I was just at a holiday party um for um the trial lawyers association this this past week. And it's so great to see people in person, you know, my clients and everything like that, and just having those conversations like, hey, if I could do this for you at a price that was affordable, you know, very reasonable, like, would you be willing to do that? And every single one of the people I talked to said mm -hmm. yes, right? Mm -hmm. And the thing that you need to understand and realize is that if you're catching that attorney client when they're getting ready for trial when they're about to start their trial like 
they've already made the commitment to spend money. Like they're already yeah. invested in seeing it to the end. The odds are they're not going to settle that case out unless it's a very favorable offer, right? Yeah. Um, so the odds of them saying yes to you at that particular point are very good. You know, so just understanding timing is, is important. And then even, you know, the, the concept of, of running a basic search when they bring the case into the office, like these are all yeah. Yeah. models that, that, that work during the deposition or getting ready for a deposition. It, it's, it's great. So these are, these are great tools and great uh, points to do it. And, mm -hmm. you know, using that as an excuse to make a phone call to an attorney as well. Hey, I just want to let you know, we're doing this now, man. Yeah. I'd love to sh show it you know, to you. It gets you that FaceTime, even if it's a zoom call or however you, you do your video chats, um, or, connect. or an, an in-person meeting or uh, even a phone call and all that, it, it, you know, like there's, this is a door, uh, a, something to open the door for you to get back in to talk yeah. to your clients, right? Well, you mentioned too, juries, uh, courts are open again. It's robust again. And this is a good time. We're ending 2022. We're going into a new year. Trials are going to be filled. And this is a perfect time to launch this product to potential clients and get that tickler in their mind. Hey, this is available. And then, you know, you, they can do it again. They do it now and then do it in January again. Just want to remind you, we have this, pro this product, it can be used for this and this. And then also, again, investigators can just buy, they don't have to buy 40 at a time. They can buy one at a time. If they're doing a background report and they want this information, they just purchase it and they then they can incorporate it into their report. And, uh, you know, um, clients, my clients really like it because it's different than what they normally, I think I was telling you before we started that there's a particular client I have out of Tennessee and they were hiring a national firm doing all their background and paying a lot of money and they hired our firm and uh, we blew them away with what we provided for the price was a little bit higher than what they were paying, not much. And they started, I mean, I've gotten so much business from this law firm in Tennessee Right. surveillance and uh, background reports. And I use this data every time. And they're like, they're just blown away by it. I, they just think I hung the moon. So. <laughs> we, we all like clients like that, Matthew. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, especially paying ones, right? Um, uh, yes. You know, you can make yeah. the, the argument that, you know, when you're doing your pre-surveillance workup, that this these are tools that would be helpful to, to yeah. know the personality of the person that you're going to be surveying. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's so many points of where you can, you know, use this stuff. It's, it's quite fascinating actually. And, yeah. uh, you know, we can do it today. <laughs> we'll see where we're, where we're at next week. Yeah. Uh, you never know with this, with this stuff, but that's, that's the fun part about technology and, uh, investigations. Like it's, it's changing when one door closes, another one opens all uh, the time. Isn't that something? Stuff. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, it's really, uh, really great. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, these are, these are tools. So we're, we're, we're giving it out to you. I think we're going to wind down uh, over here, Michael. Um, sure. I, I, I don't want to make this too, uh, pitchy <laughs> right. uh, because this is more of an educational thing yeah. for folks to realize that this technology is out there. And, um, you know, Mike and I have a good thing going here. And I, I, I said, Mike, you kind of, Michael, Michael and I had, had a good thing going <laughs> here. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all about sharing, you know, and I, I think that, you know, if I found something that works, I want you to have it as well. Uh, and just understand that the technology is out there. So, uh, Michael, why don't you give the, um, the email one more time? Again. Sure. It's support at ID reveal. Dot com and that's the website idreveal.com like identity reveal idreveal.com support at id reveal and we'll respond to them yeah and we'll, we'll have uh the um in the show notes we'll have that uh, sure to that um michael thank you so much for coming on and again i know it's been a been a while and uh you know folks also um um michael is a partner with the investigators toolbox so id reveal um if you're a member of investigators toolbox, you can actually get an additional discount yes. uh, for, for using. So uh, if you're a member, just go on to the site, check it out. I, I don't 
I don't know if we, I don't want to, I don't want to say the number because I don't know it off the top of my head, but I know you do get a discount. So yeah, um, yeah. folks should go 100%. in there and, uh, and, and take a look at it. One of the added values um, for the exclusive community. So um, thanks again. Thanks everybody for tuning in and uh, we'll catch everybody next time on the next episode. Take thanks, care. Matthew. Appreciate you. Yep. Take care. Well, that was a fascinating episode. Michael has a great product, so make sure you contact him and tell him that you heard about it on the show. You won't believe how well this is working for Matt in the New York market, so it's going to be good for you, because if it can make it in New York, it can make it anywhere. We also want to say a special thanks to Crosstracks, PI Institute of Education, OREP, and Conflict International for sponsoring the show. So please support our great supporters, and you have to support Investigators Toolbox, because really, it's the reason you're getting to listen to this podcast. So climb aboard and join the fastest growing digital community for investigative professionals. New code, goodbye22, and save 25%. If you have a question or a comment about the show, email Matt at MatthewS at SatellitePI.com, and you can also find him on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. Yes, he's a social media butterfly. We want your feedback to bring you the best shows possible, and we'll be back next week with a brand new show. So make sure you tune in as we wind down 2022. Stay safe out there.